This is Talk of Asian Marketing with a special emphasis on localized Chinese consumer behavior. Our website is ccc.qbook.tv, where you can find other audio and video episodes with photos, links, and information related to today's conversation. Subscribe to leave comments and access research episodes with applied topics and research reports. Okay, here we are, talk of Asian marketing, and we're out on location again, and we are in central Taiwan. Near Zhanghua. Near so Zhanghua, in between Taichung City and Zhanghua. That's it, just up on the lovely, famous Bagua Mountain, so very beautiful scene. Very just, peaceful. I'm glad that we're away from the tail end of the cows. Just Yeah, we've the got something line. unusual here. In fact, our point was to go shoot on the mountain to show Taichung City, but it's a completely overcast day, which is pretty normal, about 80% of the time, lots of pollution. So we decided to skip the city shot. And get a cow shot. Get a say. cow shot. <laughs> now, cows are really unusual in Taiwan, but there are some farms, and they're basically for show, and this is one. And they kind of bring kids here for trips. My kids have both been here for trips, and they infer that they get milk from these cows, but actually Taiwan's milk is all imported from places like New Zealand. So it's not coming from these cows. It's not coming from these happy cows behind us. Completely for show. <laughs> <laughs> cows are not native to Taiwan. And they're not very popular. But anyway, the, t the point is, today we want to talk about the economy. Indeed. And of course, well, we're standing here, and often when I talk to my friends back in the UK or people from the US and so on, they always say, well, how's it going over there? Mm. And I have to say, at the moment, I mean, we're clearly in a bit of a sort of downward spiral. Things economic downturn. Yeah, uh, yeah, economic downturn, that's the phrase we want to use. But although things are tight here... You know, things are still moving on. It's not as bad as it might be. And uh, I think one reason for that is that uh, people tend to be more willing here to kind of tighten their proverbial belts. Easier. You know, I think it's easier for them, four yeah. days, even three days. Yeah. They avoid just sort of that jump to lay people off. Go to the wet market um, instead of going to the supermarket. All the things we've talked about makes it easy for people to kind of be economical. To, to economize down, isn't it, really? So yeah. it's slightly that, that Chinese mentality of, Let's make do with what we've got and make the right. best out of it. Right. We'll Let's move back in with mom. Hunker down, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a great mentality right. here. And I think it really, right. really worked well. The thing that made me uh, laugh uh, was, I think it was just after New Year's, was this uh, Xiao Pei Jian, the uh, ah. stimulus that they sent. A uh, gift certificate. Well, I think we had seen last year, because, of course, you're not in the U.S. I don't know if you guys had this in the U.K. Bush gave out. Yeah, was it 500 US? Or yeah, it like depends that? on your family, your deductions. We got 600. We're not even in the US. We still pay our taxes, <laughs> See, though. We that, do pay that, our taxes. That might cover the cost for your tax return. Right, relax. right. We do pay our taxes. Yeah. In fact, our US citizens get double tax, so we, yeah. we do that. But we did get a little gift uh, from the government, $600. And, of course, that was criticized yeah. because people just took that, like we did, put it in your bank account. Yeah. Or for us, we just put it into the stock account. Nobody really spent it. And so in Asia, they were thinking, hey, when the economy did slow down here, how do we handle that? Mm. And so we got this notice, everyone had lots of excitement, of course. Mm. You know, it's nice when the government actually gives you money rather than the other way around. You know, you're always dreading that sort of tax bill at the end of the year. So uh, we had the note, we went to the post office, and of course the first couple of days, there's a massive queue stretching on for miles. Okay, that was the get your gift certificate, the, right? The, the now the government spent some time thinking about it, whether they yeah. should just send money, send cash, yeah. but this is a certificate, and the idea is you have to spend it. Yeah. 
yeah, you can't save it. Well, I, I should qualify that it's a gift certificate because actually, what it really reminded me of was that monopoly money. Yeah. Monopoly money. Well, it's, it's like cash, like small, right? Small cash right. notes. Right. It? it was kind of cute, you know. My yeah. wife was kind of looking at it and saying, maybe we should save it, you know, become like a collector's <laughs> thing, you know. And I say, no, you know, April, it will, we've got to spend it. You know? yeah. And there's a deadline, idea. right? There's a deadline to spend it. So my wife you have to spend it. To you know, frame again, whatever. As, yeah. And I said, no, no, come on. And I think. Everyone. I can't believe she wanted to keep it. It was not a small amount. No, I, but I think she thought that maybe in the future it would actually be worth more as a kind of collector's thing. Interesting. I think that would be hard. 3600 Which is a reasonable amount of money. I mean, Do you have any idea why the number was 3600 I don't. Sun Leo. Ah. Sun Chen Leo. So I'm thinking Sun 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 Li. Think? Smooth. Smooth. It'd be better than su su. Su chen su su bai. Su su kuai. Yes, I, I, I just thought there must be some uh, an idea. good, good Yeah, yeah just an idea. But that was, uh, and it, of course, as you say, it had that, that date you had to spend you it You had by. to spend it by. And, so and you can use it anywhere. And that was the thing, because it was equivalent of cash. Right. You could just walk into any store and anywhere and get it. And I think the other thing that's really impressive was... They spent a long time debating how to do it, whether foreigners married to local yeah. spouses yep. could get it. Yep. They worked through all that. And actually, I mean, for me, the distribution was very, very smooth. Very smooth. Very went to the post office. To just go to the post office. They use an existing channel. Use your chop. They had the police there just to make sure there was no weird things going on. A few minor scandals around with some questionable things. But by and large, very smooth, very impressive, very mm. easy. Just got mm. it. And then, of course, everyone went out and spent it by and yeah, large. I mean, yeah. I like your glasses. I heard the right. Yeah, well, okay, that's yeah. why I got my new glasses, yes. I was in Singapore at the time, so I didn't yeah. get mine. Yeah. I came back. There was no, there is a deadline for getting it, but it's yeah. still not passed yet. Yeah. So I went to the post office, got mine, uh, went out, and thought, what do I need to get? And I need to get glasses. I'm going blind from uh, working on the computer too much, making podcasts and video casts. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I got two sets of glasses, one reading glasses, one from my... Uh, uh, long nearsightedness, yeah. and um, that was uh, three thousand eight hundred. So I had to just add a couple hundred to pay. And there we are. I think that's the other great point about it. Often people were advertising products at like you know yeah. four, five, six thousand, and so people would go, hey, you know, I only need to put two thousand in, and I get a really big new shiny monitor from right. my computer. Or a lot of prices went on sale, and it came down to just the right just amount, right, right. three thousand six hundred yeah. NT dollars. Three thousand eight hundred, that kind of money, <laughs> like you're saying, where people think, yeah, two hundred bucks. Just so putting just a couple hundred, it's okay. A couple hundred NT or you come to a place like this and take a tour, have a dinner, and they'd have a special package, and you can use your coupons. Stimulus coupons. Yeah, I thought this in Taiwan it worked really well. There was some debate over the economic effect. It does seem to have been popular, uh, positive, mm. and um, you can see why people have been encouraged, steered towards actually spending. And of course, yeah. I mean that's the whole notion, isn't it, Clyde? Of yeah. economic stimulus. You want a fiscal approach. Well, you've got to get people out to spend the money, not put it in the bank. So yeah, we should have it as a whole other economic show. Whether it works or not, you know, is a whole other question. Another, another debate, but, the but it, did, it does seem is, better than putting it in the bank. If you want a fiscal approach that's to drive people to spend and consume, yeah. Yeah. then that seems to be a really smart way. Yeah, because do if you don't spend it, you're stuck with that coupon, unless you're like your wife was saying, she's going to keep it to sell on eBay someday for a higher price um, unless you're doing that you know I was surprised there wasn't a lot of uh, piracy and uh, copying going on but it yeah. seems to have worked really smooth yes I mean I think, think that was your idea on the numbers wasn't it smooth but yeah I thought it was smart I thought it was clever and um, the execution was pretty pretty good I think it's really interesting this one. idea that you know they're talking about another one yeah yeah no kidding okay. I, uh, for the one of the festivals, whether that's still coming or not coming, so you need some more glasses. Deficit, as well. deficit spending. Yeah, I got to get more glasses. So, so the point is, um, I think the interesting thing here is you can come to economies like Taiwan, like China, like Hong Kong, like Singapore, and they're really doing innovative stuff, mm -hmm. even on the macro economic side. They're doing things, and then how they make that policy on the macro side, and how they execute on the micro side. You know, it leaves America and the UK a little bit in the dust. These guys are really innovative. It's it's clever stuff, and I mean, we've seen we have seen like Hong Kong or um, even I think in Singapore they did give the tax rebate, which is not unusual. Yeah, which yeah. Say in that. Hong Kong and Singapore, they run it like a company where you actually get money back if yeah. the comp if the country as a whole made a profit. Yeah. It's profit sharing. 
Private sharing, right? Yeah. I love that idea. I think it's right? great. And they're very famous for it. Yeah, Singapore. right, right. So these guys, it's really innovative, really interesting. And so I think, you know, you've got to look beyond your home turf, look beyond just America, the UK, and European countries, which I think actually have become a little bit sleepy in this kind of thing. And you come out to Asia, even places like Taiwan, although today we're at a cow farm. <laughs> this is actually a sign of innovation because there are no cows in Taiwan. They do something innovative, do something new, do something different. I seriously doubt you can go to the UK and find a buffalo farm, can you? Not as far as I know. You can probably find them in the zoo, but... <laughs> exactly. So, for economic stuff, really innovative things, really interesting. I've spent all mine. Have you spent all yours? Mine's all long gone. I turned <laughs> mine into a drill. And why did I want a drill? Because <laughs> we're doing some work down on our sort of small holding, our farm. Uh, we've got uh, a few uh, Finland trees and we've got some sheds and other work that needs doing. So, I thought, great, let me go and get the drill and do that. So... We've kind of got the, the farm. There's going to be a queue. We're hopefully going to do fairly soon a whole show around the idea of yep. farming. We're going to look at farming, and uh, how that works in the economy here in Asia and how easy it is for people to go out and do some farming stuff. And I know that you've been playing farmer. I have, I have. <laughs> and, uh, well, I was very touched by your offer of that chicken shit. But <laughs> Yeah, well, I've been working on the chicken stuff. we got lots of chicken shit, lots of that. So we're going to get together and do another show later. I'm not sure it's the next one, but a little bit later. Don't forget, if you haven't visited the website, if you're getting this through iTunes or your podcatcher, go to ccc.qbook.tv. That's ccc.qbook.tv. And there we have a lot of research, a lot of extras, papers you can download research stuff if you register totally for free and you can catch a lot of the other shows photographs and consumer cam which we have which does not always come up in the feed in the feed that's great so do go take a look at ccc.qbook.tv okay we can buy some uh, milk cow candy on the way out what a great idea okay let's do it <laughs> This is Talk of Asian Marketing with a special emphasis on localized Chinese consumer behavior. Our website is ccc.qbook.tv where you can find other audio and video episodes with photos, links, and information related to today's conversation. Subscribe to leave comments and access research episodes with applied topics and research reports.